big shit, big shit, big shit. Uh, name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This unique hustle, man. Hey, man, and guess what, man? I got a special, special guest today, and he brought HHF in here, man. Pimp and Ken's in the building, man. What's going on? HHF. 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 Man, I got to get this out When you say HHF, you say HHF. All right. HHF. HHF. There you go. Man, I mean, you know, because it's not, it's like y'all making a whole wave, man. It ain't just in Atlanta. It ain't, it just, it's everywhere. Everywhere. How did you end up? How did did you? That was the plan the whole time to bring everybody well, from know, all uh, all points of the well, world. Well, you know, when, when he was there when it first started. I said, man, listen, this is a play for everything. You know, like I said, you know, my main thing is, you know, when I look at our culture, you know, what I mean, I look at the people that's in charge of it. I'm like, man, this is our culture, so it's our call. So I understood that, you know, the Democratic Party do it every four years. The Republican Party do it every four years. They rally the cry and they bring these people together and they. They elect presidents and they elect senators and congressmen. So if they can do it on that scale, we can do it on the same scale, but we only gonna elect ourselves and we're gonna put ourselves in a position where we can get our own autonomy back. We can be independent once again and we can support each other and we can do by mere affiliation, we can be able to buy each other music and not only buy each other music, we can share each other videos on YouTubes and on uh, social media and that way you'll send me That's we, a become, family. we become the machine. And you know, everybody, you know, when the team win, when Dallas Maverick win, everybody, everybody get a win. ring. You know what I'm saying? Everybody get a ring. Not just the yeah. not just the, the star players, you know, not just the ones that's everybody see on uh, you know, uh prime time, but everybody get a ring. And so that's what we teaching these young people. We teach them about uh uh cryptology, we teach them about uh, group economics, we teach them about uh, you know, ASCAP BMI, C SAC, you know, uh TuneCore. And these are things that they need to know. So when you take a child or you take a, a mind that's not developed and you season that mind and you shape it and you develop, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it becomes acclimated to you. Just like the mother. The reason why the mother and the child bond is always strong is because the mother is the first teacher. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so when you're the first person to get out there and you start teaching the truth, you start teaching these other brothers and sisters, you know what I'm saying, how to uplift their mind and mm -hmm. how, how to come from a different perspective, then they appreciate that. So we're just, you know, the ones that's throwing the alarm clock in the graveyard and waking up the dead. Wow. So we got cash. Yes, sir. And we got, is it Big Bang? Billion dollar bank. Ooh, Big Bang. Just say the bank. As long as you, as long as you say the bank. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't the little one. So just, just mm -hmm. how did, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to ladies first. Okay. Big Bang, how did you end up dealing with HHL? Well, um, I was blessed to meet Pimp again at uh, Big T when he had his store there. Yeah, yeah. And I get my hair cut there, get my nails done there. Shout out Carlos. Yeah, you know shout out there. Carlos. Shout out all the, all the everybody else up there. But, uh, you know what I'm saying, I've been hustling in Dallas for many years since 2000. Ugh, I'm going to tell my age if I tell y'all how long <laughs> <I was>, how... <laughs> So. Uh, I met him then, and then he disappeared on me, and I disappeared too from the city. So I took off and uh, went to Atlanta, but we didn't link in Atlanta. We linked back in Dallas because I came from, uh, you know, back from uh, traveling, and I uh, happened to be back in Dallas. And <coughs> the rest is gonna be history. <laughs> man, so you know uh, your music, man. He, I, I'm hearing that, and I gotta get some of that music. You gotta be texting, sending me. You gotta follow me on IG and yeah, send me that music, for sure. so I can. Cause what I do is I try to push the music and the narrative. Like, like when we doing this right here, you know, just to the projects or anything you doing it may pop up he know that if you watch boss talk i'm gonna bring it in because i want people to see yeah. you know what you guys yeah. got yeah. going man yeah. because we don't have the outlets like like uh to get the music out there like we used to it's mm -hmm. different now the visuals got to be on point yeah. you know what i mean yeah, so sure. that's a very important part of what we're doing you know what i'm saying the way they used to do it through record labels and all that they don't do it that way no more mm -hmm. so a lot of time you lose ground and when you don't do it the way that they used to do it, trying to find a new way. So I just say, on this platform, the way we try to acknowledge you guys is to put that, you know, that burst of energy of what your project may have been that you was working on. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. So people can see the newest, and, and then when you come back, we pushing it again. Hey. What you think about that, Cash? Man, that's what's that's up, dope. man. That's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. We need that in the game. Yeah, I'm a, I I, st I and they probably you you'll see other people do it now, but I pro I, I, I never got that from nobody. I just start doing it because I feel like that's a way to get people to see what you guys are doing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Or, or what you guys have done. You yeah. know. So you you from Oak Cliff? You say? 
Uh, I'm from Dallas Fort Worth. I'm a military brat. So oh, you might be from any part. I could be from anywhere, but you know, we going to the top. I know that. <laughs> and, and you from St. Louis? I'm from East St. Louis, Illinois. So is, is that where Nelly from and Ching and all of them? Well, Post actually, two. they from St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. I'm from the east side of the water. Okay. Away. So Ten when you it's away. a bridge same, that divides us. When you cross over the bridge, you're in the Illinois side. Actually, where I'm from, it's, we're the murder capital of the world right now. You So you think Illinois, you think Chicago and the murders that they got going on up there. But we only got 89 blocks. So the ratio, ratio of people is shorter than Chicago. So that makes us the murder capital. Actually, sometimes they try to put us in. When they say St. Louis the murder capital, it's because they put the Metro East in it. And the Metro East is East St. Louis. Man, it, let me ask you something, Pim. Again, you got these nice shades on. I look over here to eat. They banging this. The glass game is on point, man. I mean, is that a part of HHF? Do I need to yeah, get me? You definitely got help. You definitely hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that might stand for fashion. Hold on a damn minute, y'all. I'm not going. <laughs> hey, you got to have your. It's just my. It's just my fashion. You got to have your. You got to have your. You got to have your shades. Up. There you go. Hey, listen, man, this boss talk. That's why I be going down like this. Because this is really who I am. Like, I be tripping. You know? yeah. uh -huh. But I, you got to be real, bro. You know those, what I'm saying? Those the millionaire. Oh, the man, you know, yeah, these old millionaire, man. Like millionaire, I say, man, my, my girl got me these, man. Uh, Mama Scott, I went down there. She said, man, E, I come on your platform, and you never charge me ever. All my team, she say, all other people, you know, they kind of thought, you know, yeah, do it like they, this they, or they that. Money. Man, she brought these to me, the, man. Like, like, That's love. Lady C? Huh? Lady, ladies. No, the the one who gave me these, Mama Scott. She oh, okay. out of East Texas, man. Okay. A fast ENT, man. Yes. Just did a, a collab with Ti and a couple more people. She working, man. But I had to shout out if I'm gonna put these bad boys on. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> sure. Sure. So man, let's get back to it, man. HHF, man. Like, so you, uh, how did you end up just linking with uh, Pimpin' Ken and the whole movement, man? Uh, actually, uh, hey man, while we at it, man. Go hey, ahead. Look. Let me see what you got for me. Hey, look, I got these two songs for the five, man. man. You know, give me one of them, man. I got you, and bro. And the cold, dirty world, man. Out? It's the best thing smoking yeah, right yeah, now. You know, yeah, it's Steph, the real Zaza. Out there. I got hey. to give him some. You know, all the young folks that they smoking on the Zaza, and like uh, Jay Z said on that new DJ Cali record, you know, all the OG still yeah, smoke yeah. the OG. But this that Zaza though. You know what I'm saying? I got five for the 25. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got 10 for the 50. I was I at Big, it, T, Big T Plaza with, with Ken. You know what I'm saying? Just really out here getting my hustle on. I love it, man. One thing I can tell you about Pimp and Ken, he, that's what he going to do. He not coming through empty hand. I just checked some cats on this last night because they were like, man, and I ain't going to say the person name. They were like, man, when I come through, man, just bless our game. Woo -de -woo -woo. I named you. I said, man, when you coming on the interview, I said, I'm putting shine on the city and people in the city have something tangible so people can support you don't come or you can go you, you got to have some kind of skill to go mm -hmm. get something yeah. and then we will buy it we yes. will get it from you yeah. but you got to come on with it man yeah I got merch too right? man yeah. I got merch too and you can shop online I accept credit cards or like you know I got some people that was like yesterday like uh, oh man we ain't got no CD players I'm like you gonna wanna keep this like your mama had Michael Jackson record and it, it caught us. You gonna wanna keep Bill Boy Cash. You can't pass me up. You know what I'm saying? No. Nah, but yes. uh, how I met Ken though, man. I dropped brick by brick and um, some promoters in Columbus, Georgia, was like, "Come open up for Mo Three. Mo Three was killed three days before the show. They was like, do a candlelight visual. Came and killed it. So the same promoters was like, "Man, would you come up to Atlanta and open up for Fujiano? I'm like, "Yeah, let's do it." I'm killing it on the stage, and I'm looking for my peoples. The security moved them to the back of the club. I'm, I'm real particular about recording my performances because I put them on, on my platforms, and um, that's how all my fans go and watch me, my lives and stuff of that nature. So they push my people to the back. I'm snapping on them like, man, why y'all back here, man? Y'all supposed to be by the stage recording me. They like, man, calm down, man. We got Pippa King over there on the VIP. He said, come over there, bring you over there. I'm like, man, y'all capping. 
They're like, nah, man, we dead serious. I'm like, all right, hold on, let me get myself together. Let's go over there. So when I get over there to him, you know, he extended his hand to me, and he was like, I got anything you need. You know what I'm saying? So it was just having that and being in Atlanta, Georgia, like, man, I really need that kind of backing. You know what I'm saying? He was like, go on stage with a Compton, California artist. I was like, dang, he putting put me together with people. You know what I'm saying? No. And everybody I met that night was from different places. So he was like, yeah, come yeah. to my crib, man. You you don't want to miss it. We got something every Monday. We're going to start Hip Hop Fraternity. I'm like, man, I got to go back home, man. I done spent all my money down here in Atlanta. Atlanta is, is, is expensive. It's $100 to park at KOD. You know what I'm saying? So... He was like, nah, I don't think you want to miss this kind of my crib. And when I got there, man, there was like 30 people in the room and everybody was something powerful in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Lawyers, you got people that were shooting movies. We had a person that was writing songs for Whitney Houston at Disney. Uh, Jerry LaVert, guitarist. I'm like, yeah, this the spot. The DJs, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This the spot where I need to be. And it was family oriented. Dope. You know what I'm saying? So we started... We started from the bottom, man. You know, I watched it grow, and he was telling me, he was telling me, we were talking on the phone every day, he was telling me about what he was gonna do and everything that he manifested. I watch it come alive, you know what wow. I'm saying? You know, that's 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 something else, man. How did you how did you know that he was one of the guys that you would like to, you know, Well, I didn't know, of? you know, my thing was, you know, I sell DVDs. Yeah. So I asked everybody to wanna buy a DVD. Yeah. And I said, hey man, you know, uh, I, I'm having this meeting at my house in Buckhead. So niggas like Buckhead. That's a good. That's a good neighborhood, you know. Nigga, you I heard you about it. You on the south side. You know, you ain't in the hood. No, I'm, I'm, and then, you know when you say you go to Pippa Ken house, that's a whole other level. You man, know what I'm saying? Me. So you know what I mean. Niggas like, oh, this nigga must be on some real shit. He ain't on no sucker shit. You know, he having this shit at his crib. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I knew that would make people comfortable. So I bought that house. I, I well, it's not a house. I got that condo over there, and there was a. a a clubhouse where we was actually meeting at, which is downstairs. So I, I, cause I know people be comfortable, you know, and I know Atlanta, I've been in Atlanta for 20, 30 years. So, you know, everybody that I meet, you know what I mean? It's like more so on some Malcolm X shit, you know oh. what I'm saying? It's on some Martin Luther King shit, man. Let's come together, we family, you know, we, we all African American, we all, you know, love hip hop. You know, can we come have a commonality on hip hop? And that was my whole thing was to bring everybody together on hip hop because I had so much game. I had been on so many levels of the business in the music industry. You know what I'm saying? I didn't work with, you know, Puffy and 50 and everybody. I didn't see all the contracts. I seen where all the body, bodies was buried and I had all the relationships and I said, you know, and I just had signed Boosie and I signed Ice-T. I said, just imagine if I could do this with independent artists. So I had a passion for independent artists. I just got to be independent all my life. You know what I'm saying? So I understand where they short, they fall short. That's like even like I told him, I said, man, get some merchandise. You know, I, he said, man, I said, he said, they don't buy a CD. I said, they're gonna buy it. You know why they're gonna buy it? Cause it's gonna be a complimentary. That's buy. right. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna buy it because they see you hustling. That's you right. I said, 99 percent of the CDs, I said, niggas don't even really want them. They just buy them because them. it's me. That's respect. And because you know it's respect. So you know that's what I want to teach them. This basic stuff about being independent. You know, coming to boss talk, you need you need hustle. This is necessary. Very necessary. You know what I'm saying? This is how you're going to, I mean, it's all dots. You know, and that's why I wanted to teach them. And that's that was my passion to bring. And then, you know, the primary reason was my son. You know, he was down in Atlanta. I sent him to college, you know what I'm saying, to go to school for engineering. And his brother was in uh, going to school for acting up there in Cali. You know, so, you know, I'm, I'm my son is my passion. You know what I'm saying? That's So when my son had a passion for hip hop, you know, I just had so much game, man. I said, man, let me show these niggas how it go. Man, that's And the beautiful. only way it's going to work is y'all got to come, come together. Come together. Well, if I don't come together, this shit ain't going to work. Never work. And the come together it. part is the most important thing because me making that transition to moving from the St. Louis, East St. Louis area down to Atlanta, Georgia, I came at the midst of a time in 2020 Corona where they was like pulling money from the artists every which way. The promoters want to be bigger than the artists, you know what I'm saying? And so with Ken brought, he brought the family back in behind me because Atlanta really pay attention to you when you come on the stage 20, 30 deep. He had us out there in these HHF jackets. We hey. all looked at one of cool. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody looking like no slouch. We all look the man, good, you know what I'm saying? I don't mean to cut you off, man, but we we is the biggest thing in Atlanta right now. I already know. No, but, but it was so crazy, it was so crazy. It was other people, you know, and you know, we reached out to those people 
And we let them know, man, you know, hey, man, we just want to work with y'all. That's you it. Know, I want everybody to be hip hop attorney and still be themselves. I want you to be unique hustle and hip hop attorney. That's it. That's it. And I think that that was the trick that we used. You know what I'm saying? We, it wasn't really a trick. That was the, that was, that was the strategy. Let everybody be themselves. Like I tell him, you're a boss. Every chapter of the hip hop attorney, we got 14 chapters. Each one of them are CEOs. Wow. I'm saying if you go to the website and you type in chapter, you see all of them got their own pictures up there. They all, you know, I, I, I kind of form it like the United States. You know what I'm saying? You know, if if we had a, a, a black house, it'd be, a, you know, a, a Atlanta would be Washington, D.C. Definitely. You know what I'm so, so that's our Washington, D.C. And if you want to call it the headquarters, the black house, well, the black house is it for the HHF is in Atlanta. But, you know, you also got uh, the state of Texas, you know what I'm saying, which is y'all governor. Is it, what's the kid? Uh, Abbott. Abbott. You got Kemp, you got uh, all kind of governors. So they control their states. And that's the way we set hip-hop fraternity Beautiful. up. Beautiful. So they can run their own states because they know the territory better than But where they benefit is, for, the prophet was never accepted in his own home. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So Jesus, in Deuteronomy 1919, talk about the prophet. Jesus was never accepted. Never. Ain't no prophet never been accepted in their own home. So they're not going to accept him in St. Louis. No. But they're going to accept the hip-hop fraternity that's, because that's now it. he's more powerful. He's like an octopus. He got more legs. And that's 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 me understanding black history, Correct. understanding you know the black experience and everything. I understood how we was gonna do it, and Man. how we was gonna be able to do it where the feds can't indict us. See, the, the feds can indict uh, him from doing some knuckle, knuckle, some sucker shit in in, in, uh, in St. Louis, but hit the way it's set up, he got his own LLC, he got his own five hundred one c three, so he's independent of hip hop fraternity. He's just DBA. Yeah, so yeah. I own a hundred percent of. Hip hop fraternity, you correct? Know? I mean, like I said, they just approved it. I, did I show? I showed yeah. her. They just approved it officially <laughs> yesterday. They, hey. said you, they said you are the official. <laughs> it took two right. years for them to prove it, man. It was crazy. I'm like, you know me. I'm, I'm like the fans are trying, to, trying to stop it. The fans trying to stop my shit. I'm tripping. I'm like, man, these motherfuckers <laughs> is crazy. I done paid my money. I said, why these motherfuckers want to accept this shit, man? I'm man. promoting. So you know, I said they finally officially accepted. So so the way we do it, we do DBA. So he's doing business as hip hop fraternity. And that's how we keep the feds, and that's how we keep them from militarizing us and calling us a black military organization and demonizing black organization because it's been going on traditionally since J. Edgar Hoover, you know what I'm saying, when he started Cointel Pro. Mm -hmm. So we understand that as, as as intelligent black men, we know how to deal with our adversary. We know that no 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 matter what you say, the federal government has always been an enemy to the black man. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? And you can look at the community, you look at the gentrification, you can look at the uh, mass incarceration. Race is so many examples of black men being demonized and black being marginalized. You know that's what I'm saying? True. And that's why our women are dating outside the race now more. So because you know what I'm saying, it's been so beat down that we ain't shit, and we get so plastered on the news as being criminals and killers that you know even our own people like I ain't fucking with that nigga. No, that's and real. Another thing he <laughs> gave us a he gave us a million dollars worth of game for the free. He let us come perform for free. He he told us you know about fixing our credit, you know, getting a business, starting up, you know what I'm saying? Even and fed starting in the music free. business. Fed, yeah. <laughs> fed a nigga for free. Fred, oh, oh, yeah, he fed a nigga for free, you know what I'm saying? CEO for two years, out of my pocket. And fed we was him. in places, pay, like, pay we was in places like Hype Magazine, so we was able to get seen by certain people. Like one particular time, we had a little baby engineer in the room you know what I'm saying That's it's dope. been powerful people in the room he had me open up for big names so it made me look bigger you know what I'm saying around the world when people was trying to play me like I wasn't big Man. you know what I'm saying let me ask you something big bank yes. you you just mm -hmm. getting into it how long you been been HHL I'm just getting into HHL what, what do you, I've what been do down do you, a long time but what <laughs> do you what do you what do you what do you want to see happen while you're dealing with HHF? And because it's a lifestyle. Oh yeah. But what do you you just want to work more on your craft? Because you're independent, but then you still HHF. What are you gonna do? Because they got a name now. You can use that to your advantage, right? Well, I mean, right. Yeah, That's what that, sure. more than the name. To well, my you know, me, me and I had a discussion, and she was like, uh, you know, man, I just want you to hear my music. I've been knowing you all these years, right? So I finally listened to her music, and we both were listening. I said, man, she's a star, you know? Wow. And I said, listen, I said, you know, uh, the biggest problem for most uh, artists, independent artists, they don't have a team. And then I showed her our team. I showed her that, you know, Richie, NPR, Richie Rich, five yeah. million followers. Yeah. I showed her, uh, you know, PB Pluto, a million followers, you know? 
I showed it's her, heavy. You know, I showed her, you know, yeah. the, you know, our structure, the people that we got on the board, Ice T, Mr. Cole. Uh, well, <laughs> Mr. Cole, you my nigga, but yeah, I got I got to take a pause on that one. You know what I'm Get your shit together, my nigga. Uh, uh, Mexico, uh, 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 you know, uh, Sly from MG, MG, you know, just uh, uh, M, uh, Maybach Music, and uh, uh, my man uh, Yuck Mouth up there, and, uh, and, and Steve O, yeah, and, yeah. And Jack Thriller. So I showed, I showed her all these people, and I showed her how how we operate, and she was like, "Damn!" I said, "Yeah, a hundred, a hundred million, a million no, followers." She talk. said, "Oh, that's, so I showed her the back channel of how we how we maneuver and how we able to push our artists to the next level and how we get down." And she said, oh, "I'm kind of doing the same thing on TikTok." I said, "Well, you already HHL. That's you right. already got the formula. That's real." You know what I'm I mean, so uh, 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 she paid her three million dollar. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah. And, and if anybody wanted to see it, she became a member. Hey. If anybody wanted to know the power of HHF, all they got to do is look at me. You know what I'm saying? Because when I came to Atlanta, I probably only had like 600 followers. You know what I'm saying? But my following went up. My um, song Brick by Brick hit 100,000 streams. Uh, I was on Jack Thriller 16, a better show. I just had dinner with Ice T the other day and That's Coco. Heavy. You know what I'm saying? How, so how did that feel though to be in a room with them like that, man? Man, it's like it's a dream come true, and it's all it's also manifest manifestation with God, man. You know what I'm saying? Like a few years ago, when I was in a wheelchair, I uh, had an acting role to be a driver in a commercial. You know what I'm saying for Ashton Martin. And I missed out on that because I was in the hospital with my leg cut open. What happened and to make you to put you in a wheelchair? Um, I had a blood clot in my leg. They had to cut it out two ways to keep from cutting my leg off and wow. die down. Um, the blood clot caused me to have a massive heart attack, a mild heart attack. You know what I'm saying? So I went through that, and my pastor was over me praying over me. I'm crying like a mug because I missed out on this acting role. But it used to be this old man that I used to work with at this warehouse. He's like, man, you're going to play Ice-T in a movie one day. You got to play him or either Bob Marley. I mean, I blow him off like man he's just blowing smoke you know what I'm saying then I started watching Ice T it's just manifestation man, man. dreams come true Ice T man it, it, I ain't gonna he lie he a real man. OG he, gave no, us a no, trillion just, dollars worth of game just a dope dude man like then it really I don't have to meet him to understand what he's doing or yeah. what he's done for our people that's what people don't get man. you see it it's out in the opening you can't, can't help but see it I hadn't had a we was in New Jersey I hadn't had a meal dope, that day dude. he don't know he don't know I hadn't had a meal that day but man he spent like 2500 for us on man, the man, that's man. Dope, like man. it was nothing man well, well let me tell you a crazy story so I met Ice T in '95 at the Players Ball. Yeah, yeah, I was young, so you know I was crazy as a motherfucker. You know what I mean? So Ice was standing over me, and I got it. I got this in the pimp out. He said, "Oh, he's laughing like a motherfucker," because you know I didn't know. I tell people all the time. People think I be. I didn't know I could talk slick. I thought that that was just the way you talk. The way I talk. You know what I mean? So I see laughing like a motherfucker. So we didn't get acquainted that year. So the next he came back the next year. And you know, he said, Oh, that's Kenny Ivy, that's a funny nigga, that nigga crazy right there. You <laughs> know what I'm talking, saying? Yeah. So, you know, we became cool and then, you know, some niggas was tripping and shit, so uh yeah, they were jealous of me, you know what I mean? I was just so fly, them niggas was just some hating motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> they had a party up in Motherfucker, Ohio, and they tried to get me to come. I said, I ain't coming. Fuck them niggas. So I said, Kenny Ivy, you need to come. I said, Man, fuck that shit, man. I said, Man, I, said, man, I don't play with them niggas, man. Them niggas, them niggas is on some shit, man. And so he convinced me to come. And Ice T said, "Ain't no motherfucker gonna put his hand on you. I'm riding with you." So I said, "Oh, this nigga cool." You ride. So then uh, some nigga, nigga named Payroll started talking shit about him on the on the internet. And so uh, he called me, said, "Kenny Ivy, do you know this nigga named Payroll, man?" I said, "I don't know the nigga, man." I said, "What's happening?" He said, "Man, this nigga is tripping, man." So you know, I called him, and the nigga tried to talk slick to me. Man, Ice T ain't no mother. Man, psh, I'm like, nigga, now you dissing me. So I roast the nigga and the nigga disappeared. Ice he said, Boy, you a cold motherfucker. You made I, I said, that nigga didn't want none of this. No. So 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 we became friends. And then he got me on his album. He did an album. I forget the name of the album. All of us was on it was a cold album. So he got me on the album. And then, you know, it's just like it became organic. So one day he called me out of nowhere. What's up, Kenny Ivy? That's what he called me, Kenny. I said, what's up, Ice? He said, say, man, these motherfuckers want me to play in police, right? I said, shit. <laughs> I said, shit, man, you got to arrest niggas for real? And you just acting. He said, I'm just acting. I said, go do it. He said, that's all I need to hear. Wow. And uh, he'd tell nigga that story. He said, man, you know, he called all of us, really. He said, man, you know, 
niggas was in, you know, because he, he was he was really, he was such a gangster street nigga. He, he was like, man, deal you know, with that but the bag was good. The he bag said, was real good. At the time, they was offering him like a quarter million a show. Now he getting like maybe two or three million a show. You know, because his it's 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 value then went up. So, I, so I, I told him to do it, man. I said, yeah, man. That's I'll crazy. do that shit, man, you know. <laughs> I said, man, I support you, but you know, the, the the thing that was so cold about it, that the nigga had enough motherfucking respect, you know, to see that, damn, man, these niggas some street niggas, let me call these street niggas and see what they, how they feel how about it. How they feel about and it. everybody told him, man, do that shit, niggas only acting, nigga, you ain't no police, nigga. <laughs> nigga, you around us all the time, nigga, you know a bunch of shit, nigga. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, the nigga, you understand me, you know, we talk about, that's a joke man. we talked about on the talk show one time. I think we do y'all know how much, that how much history sitting right here, like, with the way mm. this yeah. man done been through so much, man, and done so much, really, in his lifetime, man, a lot of I say he won already. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of cats don't even make it. To, I, I get that from my boy, man, Pop Johnson. But when you make it to be his age, you know, even my age, and you trying to get there, it's like, damn, you know, we see a lot of people that you know don't make it to be our age. We lose a lot of partners along the way, yeah. right? Yeah, we you been, know I'm telling the truth. We've been on the road. We've been on the. We've been together every day, man, because we've been on the road. We are one of the biggest tours right now with the biggest independent artists, NPR, Richie Rich, PPE, Pluto. To live in the moment, let me get man, you signed. Rich, rich, man, that's the hey, one. Man, how many CEOs, man, that, that that got an organization as big as ours? Get in the car, ride with a nigga, man. Smell nigga feet and all kind of shit. Hey man, yeah, we been that way though. We been in the fuck out this car, city, man. city, uh, L.A., Vegas. <laughs> we been everywhere, <laughs> man. We been everywhere, man. Man, nah, man Ken to had me at Boosie House. Really? You know what I'm saying? I'm calling you. Working yeah, these niggas. Tell these niggas I'm working behind. Oh the yeah, he always calling me. Yeah. Like, like we trying, we trying to figure to it out. Shit we right we right always got something going to where it, it can always shine light on what you guys are doing for you guys to come together. That's so dope, man. Y'all, you know our unity is more powerful than an atomic bomb, mm -hmm. man. So we just got to bring our people together, man. And I think with HHF, that's a start, man. And yeah, one time he had us in the room with, uh, it was Bloods, it was Crips, it was Vice Lords, GDs. He had us all in the room together, Boosie man. House. He was able to get us on the video shit, together man. on his birthday. That's dope. What happened on your birthday? You know, I didn't get to make it, but I know y'all got out through there, man. Well, no, that was viral. We went viral. Before that. So okay. uh, what happened was, you know, all these niggas, Crips and Bloods and shit, gangbangers and shit, you know, they all, they all fuck with me and shit. You know, one nigga, my homie Claypool, you know, this nigga crazy. He, he man, they want to kill so they five minutes. So, you know, he, you know, he like, man, yo, man, yo, cuz, dude, blood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nigga, he blood, but he fuck with me, nigga. <laughs> Oh, he fuck with you all? Oh, he cool then. So, you know, that's how everybody yeah, think. Yeah. If y'all fuck with kids, we ain't gonna we kill all, each other. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, it was like, that's how the nigga, he a vice lord. Boogie man, the motherfucker, and the other niggas, they, they GD. You know what I'm saying? They, normally, they be shooting at each other, but, you know, because they fuck with me. So, it was all because they had all fuck with that's me love. that they all was, you know, being cool. Yeah. But so, I said, okay, well, I'm gonna trick these niggas. I said, oh, yeah, niggas come my birthday party. So, you got, I got all these opposition niggas at the same motherfucker. <laughs> So I made them niggas get on the motherfucking stage and say, nigga, who is you, nigga? Who is you, nigga? Who is you? They had to tell who they was. Wow. They can't, you know, they, if he don't say he a vice lord, then his vice lord brother's gonna get his ass. That's you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I put a nigga on the spot, nigga, tell these niggas who you are. Now, let these motherfuckers know all you niggas together, nigga. That's dope, So man. all you motherfuckers Ronald in the same house and they never want to y'all kill each other. And man, then so I, I, want, I want to say, I, I want to say this to the, to the whole world, man, to the people, because I want to set the record straight. Stop playing on my nigga top like he ain't that nigga though, man. Cause like my first time out here, you know what I said, I had my connection with the Mo 3 and shit. And the first time I talked to Rainwater, we talked on the FaceTime my first time out here. And I was like, yeah, man, I linked up with Pimpy Ken, the HHF. He was like, Pimpy Ken, the one that be out here selling the DVDs. He like, man, I know him. I'm like, I know you know him. He had a store at the Big T Plaza. He like, yeah. he like, yeah, man, he still selling DVDs. I'm like, yeah. He was like, HHF, what y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? But you got to stop playing on this man top, though, man. He brilliant, man. He came up with a brilliant thing. HHF, hip-hop, and fraternity, them the two biggest things we got in the world. And you put it together for a Voltron, hip-hop so powerful. 
man, we got people from everywhere coming together, man. That is brilliant, yeah, man. But you know, Rain, Rain liked it. I, and shout out to Rain, nigga. You know I told you that everybody say, like, if you're not with Rain, Rain ain't really give you that much shine because he, he just goes so hard for what he's doing. But at the end of the day, I think it's a thing where you have to create an understanding of what's happening with the movement. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, most time you can tell a nigga something, but when you show a nigga something, it's all together different. Man, so I we think had what you guys Jeff are doing, Woods. We had the AJ Jeff Woods. Can I say something about the DVDs? That, that they, these my witness, these two here. <laughs> they my witness. In, Four in, in, the in, in three hours, in three hours, that we was together, you know, going, you know, going to the club and shit. I made like eight hundred dollars. Oh, I already know. In three we, hours. we left out the club last night, and now, he now. he saw the rest of what was in his hand. We walked out. It was like it was almost like he Call dropped. Pimping kid. Like, we walked but, but, out. But, 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 but the funny, like the funny, funny thing about it though is, <laughs> is, is that they keep saying Pimping Ken selling DVDs, right? But these niggas on the corner selling dimes and twenties. <laughs> And they think that shit is cool, but they can get caught and go to jail. Yeah. Nigga, I'm selling my shit for 20, nigga, and I've been doing it for 20 years. Man. And I ain't even seen the sale, nigga. I, the police wire past me, they like, hey, Mr. DVD, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you, know, it, that was, Lerone, Lerone just said that the other night. He was like, man, you know, when he was here, he was like, man, I always, man, I buy me a, I buy me a DVD from Pimpkin. It's just a, it's a culture thing, man. They it's all love, love, bro. But guess what? Without him, guess what they say? What? Where the DVDs at, kid? <laughs> hey, look. Hey, look, we had an HHF Awards in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Wow. My song, Brick by Brick, one song of the year. We had Pastor Troy in that thing. Pastor Troy gave me a, uh, man, he he gave me a shout out in Atlanta. That was oh, big. You know what I'm saying? Man, my man like right mother. here is a bad man, man. I already you know. know. What I'm you ain't got to convince me, nigga. And, and I, I know you know. I just want to let the world know The that. world already know. Yeah. I'm going to be real with you. When you are, especially my age and, and the niggas in the, our era, we don't have to be convinced. We already know. Yeah. It's been love and respect ever since I met this man. Uh, even before I met him, I already knew. Like I said, I never met Ice-T. I don't have to meet him. I'm watching yeah. his moves. He for the culture. I remember when Colors and all that first came out. Man. I remember when he had different runs on different things, just like when Pimpology, the book came out. I can remember riding Atlanta, reading that book, and I had a white girl reading that book that was with me and my wife. I still got the picture. And what I'm saying knows. is, the dude been making moves, yeah, so it he ain't some hard. Big name. Yeah. He on some big name album, so you know, when um, I Everybody was coming up with my album, I was I was talking over with my team and saying, man, I put Ken on the album. They like, put Ken on the album? I'm like, yeah, y'all don't That's know. Big. They put me in the list of 50 Cent, too <laughs> short, right. E-40. <laughs> so it put me in a list with people, you know what I'm saying? It's like, Man, it, it is they don't you can't know. get that but around the world coming from man. East St. Louis. That's hard to do because yeah, they don't open up the door man, for us. Some things people not going to be able to see because it ain't for them to even experience. God yeah. got something for you on, that man. people can't understand. Yeah. So okay, when you're trying to tell today. somebody about your vision, they can't understand. You got to drag them along just yeah. to get them, and that'll hold you back. So yeah. I wouldn't be too even focused on the niggas that, uh, that don't get it. Yeah. We got to keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to what you said. I invite all the gangs to my party. That's real. That was HHF just to show. I didn't. They didn't. If I'd have told them, they would have never showed up. That's right. So you know, what I'm saying like you said, sometimes, man, you know, when you got a vision, and you know, you want to make a point. You sometimes, you know, you can't. People see people can't see your vision. Yeah. So you know, what I'm saying, you know, they. I'm, I'm gonna tell you one more thing. I know we gotta go. Moses, yeah, we gotta get out of here. Like Moses, right? Yeah, yeah. He he part of the Red Sea. Right? Yeah. He turned the stick into a stake, right? That's right. He killed the man with his hand, right? That's right. He he stuck his hand in his chest and came out white, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, when he had went into the wilderness, it was an Ethiopian brother. That's right. He said, say Ethiopian man. He was married to the Ethiopian brother's sister. That's he right. Said, Can you get me out this wilderness? Ethiopian man said, no, I'm not gonna get you out. It was the distance was 40 miles from where they were standing to get out the wilderness. Moses died in the wilderness 40 years later. That's right. The man, the Ethiopian got out 40 days later because he had vision. He had vision to see out of the wilderness. He understood, he, had, he, he could see. Now, if Moses would have followed his vision instead of his vision, Moses would have been out the window. He would have never died in the wilderness. Wow. Hey, yeah. I wanted to say something before we end. Every Monday, we had pregame in Atlanta. If you want to come and perform, your artist, if you got anything you're dealing with the media, entertainment business come through come see how we doing it at the HHF we got also got my man got KOD on a Friday I just told y'all it's a hundred dollars to park this man had it where it's free to park free to get in and and, and, and wow. drinks on the HHF man that's dope, I man. About all the drinks I spent I must have spent about 40 bands and shit buying liquor, buying and, shit. liquor and then we got 
we got six of the biggest uh, uh, sections in there. It's bought up in, indefinitely. You know wow. what I'm saying? We paid it for a def. So, you Man. know what I mean? That's how I spend my money. I spend my money helping others. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I try to be of some assistance to people. But then when people see me getting blessed, don't be confused. Because don't the Bible be says you're going to read what you saw. So that if I'm, you sow in good seeds. sowing good seeds, then, you know, when, when good things happen, when Ice-T do what he do, that's the result of all the good that I did. And Ice mm. always remind me, man, you're doing a noble act, my brother. No, you know that's real. So, you know, it's good to do good. You man, know that's real. And good will come back to those who do good. Man, give me your handle, man. Where? How can people get a hold of you? Well, right now, it's uh, Boss Up With Banks. Okay, and, Boss uh, Up With Banks. Bit, excuse my voice. <laughs> Go ahead. Billion Dollar Banks. Is Billion my, Dollar uh, Banks. My handle that I'll have back in just a second. By the time y'all view this. All right. Billion dollar man. Oh, no. This is coming out fast. Uh, what about? What about? Okay. Hey, hey, my 18K make sure y'all go y'all follow me, more. man. Mr. Brick by Brick himself on IG at JetboyCast underscore 19. And make sure y'all go to the website, www.thehiphopfraternity.com. Sign up, create a page, and add me as a friend. It's just like IG. It's just like Facebook. You know what I'm saying? So we're trying to get everybody to get over to this website, www.thehiphopfraternity.com. Wow, man! I, I tell you, man, this it. I, I think it's one thing to been streaming on my channel. I bring it up because I I like to mess with folks. Um, I had uh, the old the old comedians. I've been the older TV movie stars. Me and Faison was on the phone last night for the longest, and Carlos Miller was just here the other day. And the worlds are different because the, the you got the social media uh, 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 comedians. Then you got the the comedians over here, that's the traditional comedians. And they can't seem to bridge the gap. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what? They can't you, figure it you, out, but, bro. Hey, 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 so hey. I'm just easy. giving you that. I don't so baby can have some knowledge. But, 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 no, no, I'm going to tell you. This is why I tell old niggas. I said, nigga, I'm a baby boomer with millennial tendencies. <laughs> I'm a baby boomer with millennial tendencies. You know, you just got millennial tendencies. You got the, yeah. you know, hey, man, you know, uh, we had typewriters back in the day. Now that's they correct. got computers. You got... Uh, a phone that could, that that almost didn't surpass the computer. We could right. do emails. You could do editing. You could do everything. So you got dumb people with smartphones. You know wow. what I'm saying? So you know that's the the way the the way to 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 stay relevant is to stay in the mix. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know when they say we outside. I know yeah. what they mean. Yeah, know? me too. Yeah, you know I'm, I'm, I'm hanging with, I'm hanging with the young folks. I a little folks. bit of everything because I do my own skits on my, on my IG page. Too? And I've been in Desi Banks gas station. You've been skit. in Desi Banks? And um, i also been on a comedy sitcom called Uncle Billy. And, uh, you know, I did some acting in a movie called Dep STL. So I've done each one of them. And I like I like doing it on the internet because it get interacted with so many people with like the TikToks, you know what I'm saying? It's interacting with everybody around the world. I love it. Man, Cash, Big Bank, and Pippin Ken, man. HHL. Hey, HHL. Hey, man. That's how we gonna end this That's thing, how we man. Gonna end it's been it. another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a yes, boss is talk.